Hi, my name is Ryan Hawley, and I am an R&D scientist with Thermo Fisher Scientific. Building out a two to three color panel for cellular imaging is a simple task. Generally, there are go-to fluorophores that are well separated. For example, we may use DAPI in the UV channel, something in the 50 channel like Alexafluor 488, and in the red channel, we may choose RFP or Alexafluor 555. But what if you wanna move beyond the traditional three color panel and into four, five, or even six colors? Building out these types of panels requires more careful planning to minimize spectral overlap or crosstalk between your chosen fluorophores. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use Invitrogen's Fluorescent Spectra Viewer to help you build larger panels and improve your selection of fluorophores. The Spectra Viewer web tool has several features that allow you to customize light source and filters to fit your instrumental setup. Step one, we will start by adding a light source. And within a light source, you can choose either a laser-based system or a, a lamp-based system. And within that lamp-based system, you can choose between argon or xenon lamp systems. For this tutorial, I will use the laser-based system as it gives all available options, including spillover tables. As you can see, I've already pre-populated a few laser lines with the UV blue and yellow lasers. Um, I'll go ahead and add two more to this so we can build out our five-color panel. Good. In step two, you, we need to add an emission. We need to add emission filters. Because we are using lasers with discrete excitation wavelengths, we don't need to choose the, an excitation filter. However, do know if you're using a lamp-based system, you will need to set up those filters as well. Again, the choice of excitation and emission filters are fully customizable, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I will choose default filter sets. So if you go under this emission filter tab, you can see that I've again pre-populated with a few filters that match up with their particular laser line. And I'll just go ahead and finish out this panel by adding Texas red filter and we'll add a Psi-5 filter. In step three, we need to choose our fluorophores that will work with our system. The Spectra Viewer comes preloaded with hundreds of different fluorophores. You can simply access this by typing uh, your, your fluorophore of interest into this box and it should pre-populate with, with floors that match your description. Um, so we'll go ahead and add a couple more fluorophores here. Um, I'll start with Alexa Fluor plus 594 and then we'll add Alexa floor plus 647. Once you have done this, you will see both the absorbent spectra shown with the dotted line and the emission profile with the shaded under peak in solid blue. You can now view the excitation and emission profiles along with all of your chosen filters. To finalize your instrument setup and floor, floor four selections, save your panel build to your Thermo Fisher account by just simply going up to options, clicking on save, and saving your changes. In part one of this tutorial, I showed you how to set up your instrument parameters and add fluorophores to fill out a five color panel. Additionally, I included a couple of fluorophores that have some spectral overlap. In this part, we will introduce the spillover table function and how it is used in designing multicolor imaging experiments. When you're using multiple fluorophores within one experiment, it is important to understand the percent fluorophore emission spillover into another channel. There are two ways to get into the spillover tables. You can either simply click this button up here, spillover table, and it'll show your spillover table. Alternatively, you can go into the view full screen mode and you can see your spectra above with your spillover table below. And this is the, my preferred method because I like to see my spectra above the spillover table. Um, additionally, you can separate your lasers and have a spillover table at the bottom, or you can separate out um, your fluorophores. And again, your spillover table will be at the bottom. In this view, you, you have the option to switch which laser you want to use and the corresponding filter. And these filters can be filled in however you want. Um, in the shaded gray boxes, you have the percentage of emission captured using the target fluorophore within its specific laser and filter set. And outside of these gray boxes are the spillover or spectral overlap. Now, obviously in some cases, spillover is gonna, be, is gonna cause significant issues, but in other cases, like here with Alexa Floor 555, using the yellow laser, a small amount of, of spillover shouldn't affect your, your end experiment too much. And there's ways to get around doing this. If you were to choose a, a high abundant target, like, I don't know, tubulin, um, and put that in, in this, in this uh, Alexa Floor 555 channel, 
then you could use a much lower ex exposure setting and the chances of picking up whatever target you had in the in the 594 channel would be um, minimal. Lastly, let's go back to the spectra view. An important feature of spectra viewer is the ability to normalize your spectra depending on your chosen laser. If you click on the, the little radio button next to the laser, it can show the relative amount of emission of all the fluorophores within a given laser. Hopefully this tutorial has taken some of the guesswork out of fluorophore selection and will allow you to multiplex with confidence into the five to eight color panel design. Mm -hmm.